Hey there! Welcome to FFBC for Kids. This is our Back to Sunday School series. Let's get started! And now, a story from the Old Testament. Alright, alright, alright. You know the deal by now. Israel, the chosen ones, sinned and did what was evil in the sight of God. All hail the false gods! So God sold them into the hands of the Philistines, Grr. who made the Israelites, the chosen ones, their slaves. Israel, the chosen ones, cried out to God. Wait a minute. They didn't cry out? That's weird. Oh, uh, well, anyways, even though Israel the chosen didn't ones. cry out, God raised up Samson. He was strong. God had chosen Samson he was strong. for a very special job even before he was born. Samson he was, strong. was going to be a judge for Israel, the chosen ones. and God had some very important instructions for Samson he was strong. to follow, called the Nazarite vow. Samson he was strong. could not touch any dead body, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead, drink any fruit of the vine, or even cut his hair. As long as he didn't do these things, God would bless Samson he was strong. with great strength. One day, Samson he was, strong. was walking down the road when suddenly a lion attacked him. Samson he was strong. killed the lion with his bare hands because he was so strong and continued on his way. A few days later, Samson he was, strong. was walking along the same road and saw the dead body I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead. of the lion. Inside the dead body, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead. some bees had made a hive. The honey looked so delicious and tempting, and Samson was strong. had no self-control. A fruit of the spirit. So Samson he was strong. reached inside the dead body I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead. of the lion, scooped out some honey, and ate it. As Samson he was strong. grew and got stronger, he began to fight the Philistines. Grr. Over and over again, the Philistines Grr. tried to capture or defeat Samson. He was strong. But over and over again, Samson he was, strong. was too strong for the Philistines. Grr. But Samson he was strong. had one weak spot. When Samson he was strong. saw a beautiful woman, he was tempted and didn't obey God's commands. Samson he was strong. met a Philistine Grr. girl and fell in love. Samson decided to marry her. At the wedding, they had a great big party, and the food and the fruit of the vine looked so delicious and tempting, and Samson had no self-control. A fruit of the spirit. So he drank the fruit of the vine with all the other guests. Later, Samson he was strong. fell in love with another woman named Delilah. Hey there, Delilah. And lived with her because he had no self-control. A fruit of the spirit. The Philistines Grr. saw this and had an idea. The Philistines Grr. told Delilah, hey there, Delilah to ask Samson he was strong. where he got his strength from. And Delilah, hey there, Delilah. agreed to find out. So every night, Delilah, hey there, Delilah. would ask Samson he was strong. where his strength came from. And every night, Samson he was strong. would make something up. Every night, the Philistines Grr. would come to capture Samson. He was strong. But he would drive them off with his great strength. 
Delilah, Delilah cried to Samson, he was strong. begging him to tell her how he could be so strong. Samson he was, strong. was tempted by Delilah, there, Delilah because of her beauty, and finally Samson he was strong. lost self-control. A fruit of the spirit. He told Delilah, there, Delilah the secret to his strength was because he had never cut his hair as a vow to God. That night Delilah, there, Delilah cut Samson's hair and all his strength left him. And the Philistines Grr. came and captured him. The Philistines Grr. took Samson to a party where they chained him up against the pillars in the middle of the building. Samson was, was humiliated, wounded, defeated, and weak because God had left him. But Samson prayed to God that God would give him strength once more so that Samson could defeat the Philistines. Grr. God heard Samson's he prayer and granted his request. So Samson, he was full of God's strength once again, pushed against the pillars with all his might, and they collapsed, and the building fell, killing all the Philistines Grr. inside. The... And... Think about it with Pastor Daniel. So this video will be our last one in the book of Judges. And like we've talked about all throughout the book of Judges, this one shows us again the sin cycle. Israel disobeys God, so God gives them into slavery to the Philistines, and then well, actually, they skip the supplication in this one. Israel never cries out to God, but God still gives a savior in Samson. But, I mean, we'll talk about the end later. There isn't actually even a full salvation in this one. So this is the last one because it's where the sin cycle kind of breaks down and doesn't fully happen. In case you're wondering, though, in between the story of Gideon and the story of Samson, there are a few other judges in there who you can go and read about uh, from Judges 9 all the way through 12. And a pattern that we can see as the book of Judges goes along is that the judges begin to reflect Israel's state with God. And that may sound a little confusing, but every time that Israel sins, well, it's a little worse than the last time that they did. And every judge that God sends to Israel is a little bit worse than the last judge who came along. And so this is the, maybe the downward spiral that the sin cycle takes the nation of Israel on. They start out doing great at the end of the book of Joshua, but by the time we get to Samson, and especially the couple stories after Samson in the book of Judges, we see that Israel is really not living for God anymore. And in fact, like I said, in this story, Israel doesn't even cry out to God to save them. When they get into trouble at this point, they're so far from obeying God that they don't even think about how they need to cry out to Him. They've forgotten who God was and why they should be serving Him. They've forgotten that they were God's chosen people. And so the book of Judges ends on kind of a sad note because Israel doesn't cry out to God. God still sends a savior in Samson, but Samson's actually a pretty bad savior. He does all the things God commands him not to do. He's selfish, he's uh, rude, he's mean, he just takes whatever he wants. He, he doesn't live for God at all either. And so in the end, God does use Samson to kill a lot of the Philistines, but the Philistines aren't totally gone yet. Israel's actually still at war with them, and so we didn't have supplication. There was no crying out to God, and then there's actually only like a partial salvation. The, the whole army of Philistines, they don't go away at the end of this story. And then there's no period of peace or silence in the land 
after Samson dies. In fact, the Israelites are now fighting with each other and it gets really ugly and there's just all sorts of bad stuff in the last couple chapters of the book of Judges. And again, this book is serving as a warning to you and to me because we saw how God saved Israel in the book of Exodus. He brought them out of Egypt. God gave them his law. God gave them victory on victory in the book of Joshua when they entered the promised land. And God is giving a bit of a warning now in the book of Judges to us because he's showing us what can happen if we choose, even after seeing all of God's great, wonderful, mighty deeds, if we choose to turn away from him over and over and over again, well, it doesn't end well. But there's hope. Because as we see the Israelites fail and as we see the judges that Israel gets be worse and worse and worse, well, it points out that we're failures too, that we've turned away from God, that we've sinned, and that we need a savior. And we know that God did send a better savior than Samson and Gideon and all of the other judges. And so in a weird way again, this story actually gives me hope because we see that even though Israel didn't cry out to God, God still sent a savior. God still cared about them. And he sent Samson who does part of the job. And then later on, when we get to the book of 1 Samuel, we'll learn about how God sends Samuel as his prophet and Samuel appoints King Saul first and then King David, who ultimately is the one who drives away the Philistines and defeats them once and for all. So Israel didn't cry out to God, but God sent a savior anyways. And that reminds me of a Bible verse from the New Testament. It's Romans 5, 8, which says, but God demonstrates his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God knew that the Israelites needed a savior, that even though they weren't acknowledging it and crying out to him, he sent them a savior. He sent them Samson, and then he sent them David later on. And God knows that you and I needed a savior, even when we weren't asking him for it, even when we were living in sin, even when we were choosing the things that God doesn't love. God said, they need a savior, and so he sent Jesus. And Jesus is the perfect savior, like we talked about last week, who frees us from slavery to sin. And he made a way that we can be forgiven, that we can have a right relationship with God, and that we can walk with him. And that's a wonderful thing, that even though we're looking at sad stories at the end of the book of Judges, where Israel is failing and their judges are bad, well, we can remember that that's not where the story actually ends off that the Bible keeps going and that eventually Jesus comes and that God was giving us an example of what he was doing. So as we come to the end of the book of Judges, I want you to remember just a couple things from this book. The first is that sin always takes us away from God. In, well, for the Israelites, we saw it was a downward cycle where they kept on getting worse and worse and worse the more they chose to sin. That can happen in your life and mine. If we let sin be our master, well, it's going to pull us away from God. So we need to watch out for that. And the book of Judges reminds us of that truth. The second thing that the book of Judges can really teach us is to remind us about the better savior that we have. And so we have hope, more hope even than the Israelites had at the end of the book of Judges because God didn't leave us in our sin. He sent Jesus. We can believe in him and have hope for a better future and hope for salvation from our sin. Thanks for watching FFBC for Kids. Come back next week when we get to the very next book in the Bible, the book of Ruth. It's a really good one that gives us a lot more of that hope we were just talking about. Hope to see you then. Bye.